It's Janet. I'm a youth services librarian at the Wilmette Public Library. Welcome to We're Gonna Make It. Simple crafts for complicated times. I am here to tell you about my new winter hobby, flying a kite. Flying a kite is awesome, especially in the winter, and here is why. It gets you outside into fresh air and sunlight. You don't need snow. You just need a pair of warm boots and warm clothes. And so what if it's cold outside? Running around after your kite will keep you warm. Flying a kite also increases your chances of seeing your friends and neighbors but you don't have to get close to your friends and neighbors. If they're flying kites too, you can't get close to them. You don't want your kite strings to get tangled. You also don't want COVID. But if you're all outside flying kites, you can still feel like you're part of a community. But first you need a kite, right? I'll show you how to make a very basic kite using common household items. There are lots of ways to make a kite and lots of styles of kites to make. I chose to keep it simple and classic by making a diamond shaped kite. See? You can make the sail, that's this part, out of newspaper, grocery bags, or even an old bed sheet. With snow on the ground though, I was a little worried about my kite falling and starting to disintegrate. So I decided to use a plastic trash bag. I know it's not biodegradable, but I'm just gonna try really, really hard to make sure my kite does not get stuck in a tree. After that, you need to make the frame. I used sticks, but you could also use garden stakes like this or dowels that you buy at the hardware store. Just make sure that one stick is about one third longer than the other stick, like this. After that, find some string, a ribbon, and a pair of scissors. Now let's get to work. First, make a cross with your sticks. The shorter one should be probably a third of the way up on the sh longer one. That makes your frame. Then cut a piece of string, oh, yay long. And you want to bring it underneath the long stick and across the short stick and then pull it tight and tie a simple knot behind the long stick. I'll show you a picture. Once you've done that, wrap either end of the string around the cross stick and around the long stick. Then tie a knot in the middle. Just make it a really tight knot. I'll show you another picture. Basically make sure it sticks together and doesn't wobble too much. Do whatever you have to do. It's time to cut your sail. I cut open a trash bag and I'm going to lay my frame down on the trash bag. I'm going to trace around the frame. I might leave um, maybe an extra inch or two just in case I need some extra sail when I'm tying it. But I'll trace it to make a diamond. This 
might also be a good time to name your kite or decorate it. I just use Sharpies for that. Keep it simple. I'm trying to decide on a good name for my kite. I'm thinking about the vaccinator or maybe the flying vaccine or maybe just something like high hopes. What would you name your kite? Okay. Now that I've got my sail, my diamond shaped sail, I am going to attach it to my frame. All you have to do is just tie it. Make sure your knots are really tight, but um, cut kind of a string about this long and um, tie each end of the frame to the sail. You might want to loop the string around a few times, tie an extra knot, make sure it's real tight. I don't think you need glue or anything, but um, you do, do need a nice tight knot. Here you go. See? And then I'll repeat that with the other three ends. Okay, now that all four ends of your frame are affixed to the sail, it's time to attach yet another piece of string. Maybe this long. This is called the bridle. You can put one end of it here on the top part of the frame and the other end on the bottom part. Now the bridle attaches to your flying line. Your flying line can be a ball of rope like this. Or you can do something a little fancier. At home, we have a lint collector um, that we use for a, a kite reel. So you can um, let your string go out longer and then pull it in to go shorter. Here's how I attached it to my bridle. If you have a little tiny circle, like a little plastic circle, or even maybe a key ring, you can use that to attach um, from the bridle to the flying line. I tied what I think is called a lark's head knot and then looped that onto the flying line. Um, you may have to do some trial and error with this. Then attach a tail for balance and decoration. Now it's time to head outside. You want to find a big open space with very few trees and no power lines. Keep an eye on the wind speed. I have heard that between five and 15 miles per hour is ideal. All right, let's go see if this flies. Figure out which way the wind is blowing. Your kite tail can help with that. I've read that your back should be to the wind, but you might want to try a few different ways of standing or moving with the wind. There is a lot of trial and error involved. In fact, you might even need to stop and adjust the way your kite is constructed. Fortunately, there's a lot of good help online. I would start with the American Kite Flyers Association. Flying a kite is a great way to stay active in all kinds of weather. It's also a fun lesson in physics. In these complicated times, flying a kite can be a way to stay connected to your community. I like to look at the soaring sails and think of them as a sign of hope. 
So go fly a kite. That is how we're gonna make it.